Hello guys, uh, welcome to the new tutorial and today we're going to be talking about a special subd component and how to combine subd components and use them in Grasshopper. Uh, this is the example that I will show you. This is just like an inspiration piece from which we will develop our project. And this is a project done by uh, Daniel Widrig. Uh, this is a competition entry. The location of this project is in uh, Saarland, Germany. I'm going to be showing you how uh, to use subd objects from uh, Rhino 7 and how to combine them in Grasshopper and how to create your own void if, you, if you're searching for something like this. And I'm going to be showing you how to create this cool uh, transition effect uh, like stairs effect throughout the whole project. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to here use one box and let's just uh, approximately give it some height. Let's say that it will be this big, doesn't need to be precise. And the next thing would be to create some uh, sub D object. So it's really, uh, it's really uh, important to know that uh, if you don't have Rhino 6 license, you cannot uh, use this uh, Rhino 7 work in progress version. So only if you have a Rhino uh, 6 license, you will be able to download a Rhino 7 work in progress version, and then you'll be able to use these sub tools. So subdivision tools. So we're going to create one sub D sphere here. And at this point now this is too big. So let's let's uh, resize it a little bit and let's try to stretch it a little bit. And if I if I press tab, you will see that I will ch I'll get this uh, different um, low poly version of it. And uh, now let's just uh, orient it to see how we want this to happen. So let's say something like this. Maybe we want uh, the middle area to be a little bit uh, scaled down. So what we can do, we can just uh, hold uh, Control and Shift and double click, and then you will get this uh, scaling tool. So then I'm just gonna uh, uh, hold it like this, and you will see that I'm holding Shift and this is contracting, and that's exactly what we need. So we got this kind of shape. And uh, from there, I'm gonna uh, play around now and see, let's uncover this and let's go to wireframe mode to see uh, what we're gonna get. So let's maybe rotate this a little bit. Let's play around to see what kind of um, shapes here we can get. And uh, something like this. And of course, uh, you can you can always turn on the control points uh, by clicking on uh, F10, and then you can stretch them and play or play around with them as well. So you can go up like this. You can create this effect. So it's similar to these plans. It's actually much much better than these plans because it's uh, developed by uh, McNeil crew. So. I highly uh, encourage you to check these tools out. They're re really amazing. They're great substitution for T-Spline uh, tools. And I cannot wait for this to go to be fully usable. Right now, it's not completely, uh, like it's not uh, exactly the same like T-Splines because uh, some tools are still being, being developed, but over time, they'll be much, much better. So let's see what we got. So let's see something like this. And uh, of course, uh, this is not going to be uh, the same kind of shape. I just want to show you the principle that you can use to uh, to get this effect. So uh, one cool thing is now that we can pretty much use this sub D object in Grasshopper as well. So let's go to Grasshopper. And here you will see that uh, we already have this definition. So I'll just go through it real, real quick. Uh, so there's this sub D, sub D ob object, which is our element here. So I'm going to just right click, set one sub D. And I'm going to select this brep, right click, set brep. And now we'll see the result. So I'm going to hide this. I'm going to hide this. And you can see that we already have that effect represented here. So you can see the result that we got. So you can see this void, and you can see the steps. And this is the definition that is making that happen. So let's just quickly go through it. So what we have here is um, 
uh, here we have solid difference. So we're we're saying, okay, I want this prep to be uh, subtracted by this sub G object. And that's uh, what we have here. So let me just uh, hide everything else. So now we have this prep and we have this sub D object and this is the their difference. So let's hide this for now. So this is what we got as a result. Uh, and then what we did here, we said, okay, I need, uh, I need this bounding box with this geometry so that I can get uh, the height here because I will need the height to, uh, to determine how many divisions I want to create here. So this is what we did here. We said we construct prep so that we can take uh, the edge and this is the edge that we took. So we took this edge, here it is. And then we uh, used a length to, to use it as a, as a value. So now we know what, what the length is. This is the length of our edge here, of this edge. And we use that to divide uh, the amount of divisions that we need. So we use this number to divide it by the number of uh, divisions. And uh, we got that a number to be our extrusion factor in the z-axis, and that's located here. And uh, of course, this first part is uh, just one point from which uh, we will distribute our planes. And our planes are going to be uh, used for cutting this, uh, this object. That's why we have this plane here, and that's why we moved it uh, this many times. So here you can control the the amount of uh, the amount of planes that you want to cut this width. So this means that if you want to have this resolution much higher, you can bump this number up, uh, or you can lower it down, and that's uh, controlled here. And at the end, uh, you just uh, plug in the whole thing into the component called uh, brep plane. So what this does, this creates uh, a section. Uh, it cuts uh, it cuts that brep with all of these uh, all of these planes, and then uh, you get uh, you get this as a result. So let me just hide everything else now. So at this point, uh, you you we cut those uh, we cut that brep into many into one hundred uh, segments here, and uh, we did the extrusion and the extrusion distance. Is the same factor as this number here that we, we that we gave it from the division in this in this area. So that that's because you want the height to be exactly the same as uh, until the next uh, step. And at the end, we just gave it a cap, and that's that's the result that we got. We got this result based on uh, on the first brep that we used, which is this one. Now, cool thing here is that. Uh, you can control this shape, you can control the brep, which means that you can also control uh, this sub D object. This means, for example, if I want to change maybe this shape, I want, the, I want it to be something else, I can simply uh, select control points, click F10, and then move this and create some other kind of uh, shape. So, for example, let's say, let's move this all the way here. And you will see that the whole structure will change. Let me show you. If I hide this, you will see that now I have a new shape. Very cool. So that's uh, that's what I wanted to show you real quick here to know that you can use sub D objects in Rhino uh, together with sub D objects in uh, Grasshopper and make really cool cool results. All right, so that would be all for today. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you like this video. It helps out a lot, and also. Click the like button and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already uh, because I'm uploading uh, tutorials like this every week. I'd also like to thank my uh, new Patreon supporters, Andrea, Lulua, Ying and Lee for uh, supporting me at Patreon this week. If you want to get all of these project files and all of these definitions, you can do so by supporting me on Patreon. Uh, there's a link in the first comment uh, below this video. And until the next time, see you and take care.